In this video, I'll show you how to configure the pins on your BeagleBone Black as PWM pins. And for this example, I'll be using the buzzer on this board. And I'll leave a link on the description below of where you can buy it. Also, just for reference, I'm using Debian 7.11. And here on my right side, I have a figure showing which pins can be configured as PWM pins. And you can access these figures by opening the browser and typing in the IP address of your BeagleBone Black. Now let's get started. Before configuring your pins as PWM pins, let's uh, see which device tree overlays you have exported. And you do that by printing out the contents of the slots file using the command cat, followed by the path to your slots file. So I previously created a variable called slots, which points to that slots file. But just for reference, if you don't have that variable called slots, you type in the full path to your slots file, which for Devin 7.11 is this. So instead of typing in cat, followed by the dollar sign and the variable, you would use cat and type in the complete path to your slots file. Hit enter and you should see all the device tree overlays that you have uh, exported. Also, if you're not sure how to export or unexport device tree overlays, go ahead and check out the previous video I made on exporting and unexporting device tree overlays. So here we see that the only device tree overlay we have I have exported is the EMMC device tree overlay. If you have the HDMI device tree overlays exported, you want to go ahead and unexport those. And the reason why you want to unexport them is because uh, those device tree overlays uh, sometimes use some of the pins that can be configured as PWM pins. For example, if the HDMI device tree overlay is exported and you want to configure pin 8, uh, pin 34 on header P8 as a PWM pin, you might get a message saying file exists. And the reason for that is because a another device tree overlay is already using that pin. So after you unexport the HDMI device tree overlay, cd into the following directory, lib slash firmware. And let's print out the contents of this, this directory. So here you get all the device tree overlays that you can export to your BeagleBone Black. And here we see the PWM device tree overlays that we can export. The buzzer on my board is connected to pin 22 on header P9. So for this example, this is a device tree overlay that I'll be exporting. Also besides exporting uh, any of these device tree overlays, whenever you want to configure a pin as a PWM pin, another device tree overlay you, want, you need to export is the AM33XX underscore PWM device tree overlay. So let's clear the screen and let's go ahead and print out again the PWM device tree overlays that we have access to. And we do that by printing ls and the l option just for list, then dot slash for current directory, and then the asterisk as a wild card, then PWM, then followed by another asterisk. So here I'm pretty much saying print out all the files in the current directory that have the word uh, PWM. So hit enter and we can and we see all of our PWM device tree overlays. So now to export our device tree overlays, we use the command echo followed by the name of the device tree overlay we want to export. So bone underscore PWM underscore P9 underscore 22 close double quotes the redirect output symbol followed by the path to your slots file. Hit enter. And also, like I said, we need to export this device tree overlay. So we do the same thing, echo, double quotes, am33, xx underscore pwm, close double quotes, redirect output symbol, followed by the path to your slots file. And if we print out the contents of this loss file again, we see that our two device tree overlays are uh, now exported. And after exporting those device tree overlays, a new file should have been created in the following directory. So let's cd into sys devices uh, slash ocp.3. Hit enter. Let's print out the contents of this file. And here we can see that we have a new directory called pwm underscore test underscore p9 underscore 22.12. So now let's cd into that. Also, instead of 12, yours might have a different number, but it doesn't matter. Seed into it. And now let's print the contents of this uh, of this directory. So now here we can see that we have several files. And the two files that we'll be working with in this example are the duty uh, for duty cycle and period. Let's print out the contents of these two files to see what uh, the, their current content is. So duty is set to zero and and uh, period 
is set to 500,000. Also, the values that you write into these two files are in nanoseconds. And it doesn't say it anywhere here, but you can tell by looking in, looking at a uh, oscilloscope. Another thing to note is that the duty cycle value you write into the duty file has to be uh, lower than the period number. If it's greater, you might get a um, message that says invalid argument. Now let's go ahead and set our period and duty cycle values. And you do that by writing into both files using the echo command. So I will set my period to 100 milliseconds. So I'll type in 100 followed by six zeros because like I mentioned before it's uh, this value has to be in nanoseconds then the redirect output symbol followed by the name of the file period so if we print out the contents of the file period we should see that the value has changed now now let's set our duty cycle to 50% uh, and again we do that by writing to our duty file so echo and for 50% you type in half of that hit enter and now you should be able to hear the buzzer. So let's go ahead and change our duty cycle to 25%. You should hear it uh, change. So now let's go ahead and print out the file of the content run. And you can see that it is set to 1. And this file is a file that is responsible for turning the pin on or off. So if we write to it a value of 0, uh, the, beagle, the buzzer should turn off. And that's it for configuring the pins for Debian 7.11. On my next video, I'll show you how to configure the pins for Debian 7.11 as PWM pins, but on C++. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.